He was a comedian, an actor, and an inspiration to many. Robin Williams fans are showing their love with impromptu memorials across the country. Flowers, cards, and photos line the steps of the San Francisco home where Mrs. Doubtfire came to life. Hello, I'm Euphigenia Doubtfire, dear. The same could be found in Boulder, Colorado, in front of the home made famous by his television debut on Mork and Mindy. This is Mr. McConnell. No, 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 no. Across the country in Boston, heartfelt messages written in chalk surround the flower-adorned bench where the actor challenged Matt Damon in the movie Good Will Hunting. You move, Chief. OK TV, remembering Robin Williams with Julie Alexandria starts now. We have lost a legend someone that so many considered a friend, yet many people had never even had the chance to meet him. Later on this month, the Television Academy will honor him at the Primetime Emmy Awards, and Viviana Vigil now takes a look back at the star's legendary career. Here in Los Angeles, the mood is somber, but so many are taking solace in the life's work of the incredible entertainer, Robin Williams. Until next week, sir. Nanu! <laughs> Williams first made his mark in Hollywood as Mork from Mork and Mindy, and audiences were hooked. As much as I like Mindy, it's against intergalactic law to eat fellow space travelers. Fly, be free! <laughs> Robin Williams' unique brand of comedy can only be described as genius. Hello! The critics and the fans loved him, and so did the Academy. A four-time Oscar nominee, Williams won a supporting actor Oscar for Good Will Hunting. Maybe you married the wrong woman. Maybe you should watch your mouth. Watch it right there, Chief, all right? Ben Affleck and Matt Damon credit Williams for launching their careers. Both expressed their deep gratitude. Affleck wrote, heartbroken. Thanks, Chief, for your friendship and for what you gave the world. He personally did so much for so many people. He made Matt and my dreams come true. What do you owe a guy who does that? Everything. Damon wrote, Robin brought so much joy into my life and I will carry that joy with me forever. He was such a beautiful man. I was lucky to know him and I will never, ever forget him. And no one else ever will either. Williams goes down in history with six Grammy Awards for his stand-up albums and six Golden Globe Awards for his work on Mork and Mindy, Good Morning Vietnam, The Fisher King, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Disney's Aladdin. Excuse me? Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Williams' ability to master drama, comedy, and improv made him one of the most versatile actors to ever grace the screen. And I was honored to have the opportunity to talk with him about his career. You've had such an incredible career, won countless awards. How do you measure success at this point in your life? If it's something different, if it's something I haven't done before, that's kind of the joy. I mean, I've tried to do a lot of different things, obviously, with drama and comedy, playing, you know, likable characters and sometimes not so likable. But the idea is to keep, you know, keep changing up. That's what's been interesting. Jonathan Winters had a great quote. He said, if they finally figure out who you are, you're screwed. <laughs> so it's kind of like that's the joy of it. I mean, to have the ability to try different things, that's a gift. Later on in the show, film historian Leonard Maltin shares with us the impact Williams had on TV through his memorable role on Mork and Mindy. Williams' quick-witted humor was his signature, and comedy clubs from Los Angeles to New York paid tribute to the master by changing their marquees in honor of the late star. George Wallace worked those same clubs and shared with our Maylene Ramey how Williams impacted the entertainment world as we know it. That's right, George welcomed us into his home here in Las Vegas and was happy to pay tribute to his friend, Robin. We all grew up in the late 70s, early uh, 80s at the comedy store and the improv in Los Angeles. And uh, this guy would come in, he was a very young guy coming down from San Francisco, but blowing the room away with his amazing personality and antics on the stage and his you know, very hyper uh, uh, sense of humor, just, just, uh, just great. And everybody was going, this guy's crazy. And he was. <laughs> but we loved him, and uh, the greatest comedian, the greatest actor. You talk about intelligent design? Look at the human body. It's a waste processing plant near a recreation area. How intelligent is that? So he did everything. He worked in the movies, he worked in the films, he worked in television. And one of the greatest qualities he had, most people didn't know about or didn't get to see, was his ability to improv. He's the greatest guy to improv. We just, he'd go on stage and just wipe a room away. Besides stand-up comedy, Robin was also well-known for his memorable talents in TV sitcoms. He was such a 
great uh, actor on TV that they tried to get him out of TV and, and rushed him to the movies, and that's what he did. My favorite happened to be out of all of them was uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Some of the other movies, Good Morning Vietnam, and uh, he was just great at everything he did. We couldn't agree more. Later on OKTV, OK we're catching up with another Las Vegas friend of Robin's diva star, Frank Marino. Good morning, Vietnam! Comedians and actors that worked with Robin Williams are not the only ones expressing their love and shock over his passing. The diversity and volume of celebrities and fans alike who have taken to social media has been incredibly heartwarming. The RIP Robin Williams hashtag has been used over 15 million times since Monday. Psychotherapist and author of What About Me, Dr. Jane Greer, shares what made him so beloved to so many. His humor reached not only the young, they were so relatable, they reached old people as well. I found my happy thought. If you got a dose of Robin Williams, you wound up feeling everything was gonna be all right in your world, no matter how difficult things were that you were dealing with. He was just really unique. I mean, and he was able to captivate all ages, all audiences, all demographics. He was just endearing and um, everybody loved him. Comedians have tweeted their heartache over Williams' death, but the more surprising reactions have come from those that didn't have a professional connection to the actor. Miley Cyrus was emotional when she heard the news, tweeting, I've never cried over someone I've never met, but I can't stop. Pink also expressed her sorrow shortly after the news broke, saying, my prayers and sad heart are with Robin Williams' family tonight. Only met him once, but it was one of the most enjoyable moments of my life. Life. Rest in peace. Robin Williams really took his pain, turned it into our joy because of the gift of laughter. The openness and honesty Williams brought to his roles was magnetic. Emmy Rossum tweeted, Seven years old with a single mom, I saw Mrs. Doubtfire. Made me feel better about being from an unconventional family. Love is love. But it's this message from the Academy that's getting a lot of attention. They posted a picture of Aladdin's genie with the simple yet powerful caption, Genie, you're free. The post has been retweeted over 300,000 times. While those are Williams' more popular roles, the legendary actor has a long list of credits. New York Daily News film critic Joe Newmeyer shares a few works that helped establish his incredible career. Robin Williams' death was a devastating loss for movie fans, but he left behind a huge body of work for us to enjoy. He was known, of course, for his comedies, but many of my favorite films of his combine comedy and drama. Make it easy on yourself. Don't be a baby, Duncan. Say da-da. In 1982's The World According to Garb, Williams played a writer whose short life was shadowed by death and catastrophe, and Williams captured the story's tragic comic tone perfectly. Kiss me beautiful. Beautiful? Two years later, in Moscow on the Hudson, Williams was stellar as a Russian who defects to the U.S. Through his eyes, we see our own cultural absurdity. Just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way. His performance in 1989's rightfully beloved Dead Poet Society is thoughtful and inspiring, and strikes a chord with every generation of teens who discover it. You hear me? I love this guy! <laughs> the Fisher King from 1991 is a real high point. Williams plays a New York homeless man haunted by the memory of his wife's murder, and the role was a tricky tightrope walk he expertly navigated, pulling one emotional note after another out from within. Something occurred to me. I fell into a deep, peaceful sleep. And his Oscar-winning turn in 1997's Good Will Hunting was the anchor of that movie with Williams' soft-spoken therapist sharing his pain with the troubled title character played by Matt Damon. It was a well-deserved Academy Award. Thank you. God bless you. OK TV, remembering Robin Williams, continues after this. You're talking about the greatest uh, improv human being that ever lived. Are you serious? You're just not even, you're seriously a genius. Mark calling Austin. Come in, Orson. Robin Williams burst into our living rooms in the groundbreaking sitcom Mork and Mindy in the late 70s and has been a fixture in our lives ever since. The show put Williams on the map and changed the face of television forever. Here's Viviana Vahil. That's right, Julie, who doesn't love Mork and Mindy? Well, we spoke with film historian Leonard Maltin, who shared with us the legacy that Robin Williams leaves behind. Mork, Mork, this is Mr. McConnell. No, 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 no. <laughs> that show made him a household name if people hadn't already seen him doing stand-up. And from there, there was just no stopping him. Like to buy a record? 
No, I'm just kind of browsing. If not, let's offer you the special deal, new from Rotel, Marcel Marceau's greatest hits. Who can ever forget? Man ascending an escalator. <laughs> Man watching the world's largest staircase. There he goes, walking across it now. Also, let's just forget the vinyl look inside and see the other five exciting vases you can get from even this. Look, it can be a hand glove. Also, it can dice, slice, and make Julian fries. <laughs> The series was built around Williams' mad scientist style of performing and was one of the first shows to allow its actors to improvise freely on camera. That series was built around him and his comedic persona and his ability to add live. That is residence. <laughs> it's for you, my liege. <laughs> Mork and Mindy introduced Robin Williams to all of America. Mind if I cut in? Thank you. Use that tone to me. What tone? That sarcastic, contemptuous tone that means you know everything because you're a man and I know nothing because I'm a woman. You're not a woman. Williams's role as a gay nightclub owner in The Birdcage brought the then underground world of drag into the forefront. Maylene is back with a man successfully recreating that show in Las Vegas. He's a man by day and diva by night. Frank Marino from Divas opens up on how Robin Williams helped pave the way for drag queen culture. When it first came to Vegas in 1986, Barbara Streisand recorded a concert in her backyard. And this producer took me to the show and Robin Williams was one of the guests. And he's the one that stuck out. I remember meeting him and how nice he was and how friendly and how funny. Years later, the Diva Show became very famous in Las Vegas and Robin actually came as a guest to the show. He became a friend after that. While the two were colleagues in the industry, Marino sees Williams as a hero, a comedic actor who accepted drag queen roles in popular films. Mrs. Doubtfire being a drag queen for lack of better thing, and then him playing the more macho guy in the birdcage and just being in that movie and modernizing it really just catapulted the whole genre of drag. You do fussy, fussy, fussy. You do Marsha Graham, Marsha Graham, Marsha Graham. You know, Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. But you keep it all inside. It was the biggest boast you could have done for a drag show because it made it mainstream. It made it okay. Here's this straight man playing a character in drag and saying, hey, it's okay to be okay with yourself and our show packed because of that. All my life, I've been playing. Williams was no stranger to the stage, and to honor his legacy, lights on the Great White Way were dimmed for one minute Wednesday night before evening performances. Williams began his acting career as a theater actor at Juilliard, where he met and became good friends with Christopher Reeve. After he earned success in Hollywood, Williams returned to his roots to star in the off-Broadway version of Waiting for Godot, opposite Steve Martin. And when his 2002 stand-up comedy tour came to a close, the HBO special Robin Williams Live on Broadway was born. The critically acclaimed routine is considered one of his best and was filmed at the Broadway theater. Most recently, he starred in 2011's Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo. While many people found Williams' decision to star in an Iraq war drama puzzling, Rahib Joseph would never have had it any other way. He says he was the first person we considered when we knew we had to have a movie star. And one of Robin's most iconic movie roles has recently taken the Broadway stage. The genie in Broadway's Aladdin, Tony winner James Monroe Englehart paid tribute to his role's originator on Tuesday by leading the audience in song. Here we go! You wait. Williams is also well known for his role as Teddy Roosevelt in the popular franchise Night at the Museum. And we will get to see him once more. Joe Newmeyer is back with more on Williams' upcoming roles. At the time of his death, Robin Williams had completed his work in four films yet to be released. In Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb, due out December 19th, Williams reprises his role as Teddy Roosevelt in those comedy adventure films. Theodore Roosevelt, President of the United States of America. There's also Merry Friggin' Christmas, in which he plays Joel McHale's father in an indie holiday film lark. There's a drama called Boulevard, which played at this year's Tribeca Film Festival, in which he co-stars opposite Bob Odenkirk. And in a British comedy called Absolutely Anything, he voices Dennis the Dog. OK TV, remembering Robin Williams, continues after this. And the difference with Robin Williams is not only was he a great sitcom actor, and he was in all these big hit comedies like Mrs. Doubtfire, and he won an Oscar for a dramatic role in Good Will Hunting, but on top of all that, he was one of the leading stand-up comics of the last half century. If you have a Mount Rushmore of comics, you'd have Robin Williams, George Carlin, Richard Pryor. He's right up there with them. 
The world lost a comedy legend when Robin Williams passed away on August 11th. The Oscar-winning actor, known for so many iconic roles, had been battling severe depression for some time. A father of three, Williams recently wished a happy birthday to his daughter Zelda on Instagram, posting an adorable picture from when she was a toddler, writing, Happy birthday to Miss Zelda Ray Williams, quarter of a century old, but always my baby girl. In the days since his passing, stories of Williams' sweetness and generosity have flooded in. The actor was on the board of the Christopher Reeve Foundation. Reeve was a longtime friend of Robin's. Williams also loved making our troops laugh, traveling to over a dozen countries to perform in countless USO shows. Williams even spent extra time with our wounded soldiers and those who couldn't go to his performances because they were on duty. Of the troops, Williams once said, they're the best audiences I've ever had. Going on to say, comedy can be a cathartic way to deal with personal trauma. And that personal trauma haunted Williams until the day he passed away. He often talked openly about his drug addiction and Williams's publicist says that the Oscar winner had been battling severe depression just days before his suicide. Maylene takes a closer look at the illness that affects so many. One of the most emotional statements came from William's wife who said, Robin's sobriety was intact and he was brave as he struggled with his own battles of depression, anxiety, as well as early stages of Parkinson's disease, which he was not yet ready to share publicly. According to the Parkinson's Disease Foundation website, depression in patients is common and disabling. OKTV OK talked with Dr. Adi Jaffe, who has not treated Robin Williams, but he did tell us the star's open relationship with his mental health and substance abuse issues may have helped sustain his life. And I think a lot of people felt like they connected to him more because he was so open. And look, in reality, that made him last for decades struggling with these issues and being there performing at the top of his game. The more you hear about his closer friends, even they didn't know that he was struggling so much. So there could be a Robin Williams hiding behind this mask that he's gotten so good at wearing. What we need to do as a society is start expanding the conversation and saying, maybe we don't understand what you're going through, so I can't really empathize or even sympathize with you, but I understand that it's really a thing and I need to respect it, and I'm gonna educate myself, and I'm gonna find the best resources for help for you. A sentiment William's wife echoed in her statement, saying, it is our hope in the wake of Robin's tragic passing that others will find the strength to seek the care and support they need to treat whatever battles they are facing so they may feel less afraid. Thanks so much for joining us for OKTV OK Remembering Robin Williams. There's so many memories of this unforgettable man that we will hold near and dear to our hearts. So we leave you now with friends and celebrities alike paying tribute through social media. Make your life 